I don't think 0.999 repeating equals 1. I know a lot of you have seen these proofs out there that it does in fact equal 1, but I don't feel that they are true or that they properly show what they are attempting to, and I want to give some new perspective on this entire stupid fucking debate so we can actually settle it once and for all. Hopefully. For far too long, I think people have been assuming that these proofs are either 100% true, when in reality they just aren't. Either because they're based off of assumptions, because they fundamentally just don't make mathematical sense, or just because there are better ways to explain what's going on here. 0 0.999 repeating doesn't equal 1. Here's why. So, there are four proofs, basically a thing saying that one thing is exactly or not exactly like another thing in math, as follows. The one-third argument, the number line argument, the 10x argument, and the calculus argument. Each of these is slightly more complicated than the last one, and the calculus one is going to be the hardest to understand, but I'll try explaining it so people who haven't even taken calculus can understand what I'm saying. Alright, let's begin. The one-third argument says that since one-third is the same as 0 0.333 infinitely repeating, and two-thirds is 0 0.666 infinitely repeating, apparently that means three-thirds is the same as 0 0.999 infinitely repeating, even though we already know that any number divided by itself is objectively and precisely one. The thing is, we can't properly represent one-thirds or two-thirds as a decimal in the way we can write numbers. Which also would mean that, at the best, one-third as a decimal, infinitely repeating, is an approximation, not an actual number. And so is two-thirds. Even if the decimal goes infinitely far, you can't represent one-third or two-thirds in any actual capacity unless you use fractions. You just need to assume that one or two-thirds is equal to a thing that we can say is exactly this or that. The only reason three-thirds works here as being represented as a decimal is because three-thirds is literally just the same as one. This also actually calls into the question of the validity of 0 0.999 even existing as a number at all, and if it doesn't actually exist, this means it can't equal one in any capacity, because, you know, it can't equal anything if it doesn't exist in fact. Holy hell, do I have a lot to say about this thing? Okay, yeah, that's what I'm going to call it. This argument states that, okay, actually, we got to start with the number line. So let's say you can have two points on a number line, 0 0.9 and 1. You can easily tell that these two numbers are different from each other because you can subtract 0 0.9 from 1 and get 0 0.1. You know, it's pretty basic math, actually, if you ask me. This is the gap between these two. Now add another 9 to the end of that string, so you get 0 0.99 compared to 1. It's smaller, but still very noticeable. The gap is now 0 0.01. Add another 9, so the gap is 0 0.001. You see where I'm going with this, right? So now, just keep on adding 9s literally infinitely to where the gap becomes just barely above 0. So small that some people have said that this gap just doesn't exist on the number line, but like, if that's not the case, when does something become, well, not a gap anymore? The gap would realistically be something like zero point infinite zeros and a one, which sure, the zeros extend literally forever, but there must objectively be a one at the end of that infinite string, making the gap something called an infinitesimal, which is a number that is so barely above zero that realistically it should have no value, yet it does in a sense. This could be interpreted as there being an infinitely small gap, which could go one or two ways. One is where there is a gap, however it's small as fuck, and it is above zero, called a non-zero gap, for obvious reasons. And two is where there is literally no gap, but that makes genuinely zero sense, since, like, where would that last one be? It's not like you can just say the one doesn't exist, even if it is an infinitely long amount of strings. Because, again... If, even if that string of zeros never ends, there must be a one after it. This would also have a few consequences which, while some people say it would break normal math, doesn't really, and it would cause quite a few things. The first of which is 1 minus 0 0.99 infinitely repeating is 0 0.0 infinite zeros and a 1. Again, I think this would make some sense based on what we're dealing with here. The math would absolutely work out in this case. The second consequence is that 0 0.99 infinitely repeating plus 0 0.0 infinitely repeating and then a 1 is, well, 1. And again, this makes sense. 
even if you have that one after the infinite string of zeros, it makes perfect sense actually in this case, even if that difference is practically imperceptible. The third one is that 0.9 infinitely repeating times 0.0 infinitely repeating then 1 is, well, 0.0 infinitely repeating then infinite nines, which also makes some sense, infinite zeros fall by infinite nines. The last one is 0.9 infinitely repeating over 0 0.0 infinitely repeating zeros and a 1, and this would be a number with infinite nines that is some kind of value, kind of like an order or something like that, which is stuff like omega, or maybe even alpha null, but it definitely has a value. This would also mean that not only is 0 0.0 infinite zeros and a 1, even the number right after 0, but 0 0.99 infinitely repeating isn't the number precisely before 1 either. There are infinite numbers between 0 0.9 infinitely repeating and 1 in this case. The 10x argument states that 10x is 9.9 .9 infinitely repeating, etc, etc. This isn't exactly a problem, except for that 9x is somehow exactly 9? Which makes no sense, because if 10x was truly 9.9 infinitely repeating, etc, etc, 9x would be 1 times less than that, or 8.9 infinitely repeating than a 1. 8x would be 7.9 infinitely repeating than a 2, 7x would be 6.9 infinitely repeating than a 3, etc, etc, until at x, you reach 0.9 infinitely repeating, etc, etc. And as I've said, this is valid due to the consequences I said would happen to the number line argument. On top of that, the original argument also basically assumes that 0 0.9 infinitely repeating is just one right off the bat without saying anything saying it is, so this proof isn't exactly right either. This is the last argument I'm gonna go over, and it's the calculus argument. Now I gotta actually probably tell you what limits are first, so I'll do a simple explanation of that, just so you actually understand the argument itself. So taking a limit is essentially like saying that, you know, what number does this start to get to as I approach a certain number, represented like this. The x is the variable, and the number, in this case infinity, is the number it quote-unquote approaches. Now let's add a layer of complexity to this. The n in this case is the amount of nines. So let's start by saying, you know, you just have one nine after the decimal. Obviously this is different than one, just like the number line argument. Now add another 9, and another, and another, and another, and another, and another, and so on and so forth until you reach infinite 9s. These people say that as n gets to infinity, the number approaches 1, which they've also said apparently means it equals 1. They use this to quote unquote prove this too, so let me explain what this is actually step by step. The first two parts say exactly what we knew before. 0.9 infinitely repeating is the same as what happens when you add nines after the decimal to infinity. No problem. The third part says that as k goes to n, you add all of this 9 to over 10 to the power of k stuff. That essentially is just saying what we did before. So n of 1 would be 9 tenths, n of 2 would be 9 one hundredths plus 9 tenths, and n of 3 would be that plus 9 one thousandths, and so on and so forth. This fourth part is where I start having issues with it. This part states that as n goes to infinity, you can take 1 minus 1 over 10 to the n repeatedly, which makes some sense. So in this case, at n is 1, you would get 1 tenth. So 1 minus 1 tenth is 9 tenths, obviously. At n equals 2, it's 1 hundredth, which means your, your difference is 99 one hundredth, and so on and so forth. This would be practically the same thing as the whole 0 0.9 infinitely repeating thing. So then, when n gets to infinity, it would be 1 over, well, infinity, which means that it subtracts something, that infinitely small but non-zero gap I explained earlier, which, again, also equals 0.0 infinitely repeating in a 1. Now for the real issue. Do you see this, where it says 1 minus 1 over 10 to n as n goes to infinity? It says that that's the same as subtracting 1 minus zero, even though we already know it doesn't. It's one minus 0.0 infinitely repeating, then a one, which doesn't equal one, but 0 0.9 infinitely repeating. I feel like that this whole proof just makes no sense once it says one minus zero is one, which sure, that part is true, but it objectively is not the same as one minus one minus 0 0.9 infinitely repeating. On top of this, Approaching a number is not the same as equaling it. 
really all it is saying is this number is close enough that it really should be this number. That's not equaling one, that's getting really fucking close to it. So yeah, this proof isn't proving anything either. And while I'm here, I should also bring up the stupid argument where pi equals four, which ties into this. This argument states that you start with a square. Now you do this with the corners. The circumference is, well, still four. Now do it again, and it's still four. Now do it infinitely. This argument states that somehow it is still four, even though we already know that it's not, and it's 3.14159265, etc., etc. And the thing is, this pi equals four thing has actually already been disproven. The same argument could be used with 0 0.9 infinitely repeating equals one, because it follows the same logic, infinitely adding nines to the end of the decimal, just doesn't make it equal one. There's also one more way this could go. Maybe 0 0.99 infinitely repeating just doesn't exist as a number. If you think about it, maybe this number just doesn't exist due to what need goes to into it needing to exist. By definition, this number can both be considered rational and irrational. In one sense, since it can be considered essentially 9 infinitely repeating over 1, then 0 infinitely repeating. But that amount of 0 also never ends. So in another sense, it can't be expressed as a ratio properly either, if at all. And if we say that this number can't exist, it definitely doesn't equal 1, even if it's expressed as a ratio. Well, it still can't exist properly. Even if it did, it still wouldn't be 1 regardless of how you slice it. And really, it shouldn't be equal to anything in that case due to the nature of how this number works. It's like this number is some kind of glitch in base 10 decimal representation or something. That's probably why this stupid debate even exists. Again, the reason this debate even exists is because this number doesn't have a definite value in decimal representation. So at the best, these proofs really don't prove anything or are just aren't correct at all unless you assume stuff, which you can't do with proofs. And I feel like there's enough flaws in these things to consider 0 0.9 infinitely repeating in 1 as different. And again, you are free to form your own opinion on this, and I recommend you actually do. And also, if I'm wrong, go roast me in the comments, I don't care. So, if you think these two very clearly different numbers are both equal to 1, go ahead. But I will still keep arguing why they aren't, or even if the number exists at all. Unless there's ever true conclusive proof that they are the same, which there is quite literally none apart from these proofs to my knowledge. So yeah, that's why I think 0 0.9 infinitely repeating and 1 are not the same. Thanks for watching.